let us shred up some plastic here. For microwave pyrolysis in particular, we have to mix the plastic with carbon that we actually make from the process as well. So it's not an extra cost that goes in here with this carbon. I also added a cooler. I used to just have my water pump in a bucket, but I added a cooler because I'm adding ice to this water to improve the condensing of this machine. So obviously I don't want the ice to melt so quickly. So I have it in this cooler. So let's add some ice. Now, this ought to be some ice cold water. So this is going to be the first ever test run of this machine under some slightly negative pressure or a consistent vacuum, rather. Right now, we're under a typical negative pressure of the machine. Uh, 2.61 of a vacuum, so very small vacuum, but enough of a vacuum to get enough of the oxygen out where there's no explosion risk. See how deflated this ball is. So what I have here is I have this pump. This is a vacuum pump from a, an, a window AC unit. And right now, the vacuum side, we just vacuumed out all the air of the machine. But what's going to happen is when we turn the machine on, we're not going to turn on this pump right away. Why? Because no vapors form until the machine starts to get hot enough to temperature. We're going to turn that pump on once the machine gets a little bit hotter, once some real vapors start forming. But in the meantime, the vapors are going to normally just go to this yoga ball, which they normally do. Fill this one up. And then we're going to turn on the vacuum pump after it gets hot. A lot of vapors start forming. And it's going to really suck those vapors out and push them into this bigger bladder here, which has not been completely sucked dry. There's still some plastic natural gas in here. And this will allow us to see what happens. Will we get more oils? Will we get less oils? Do our condensers need to be stronger to get more oils under vacuum? We also have a, the manometer here to just keep making sure that the vacuum is maintained. If we have any vacuum leaks, we obviously need to turn off the pump, turn off the machine for safety. So that's the basic setup. All right, so we got it on. Now it's just a matter of waiting for it to get up to temperature. I got an additional thermometer. This one's reading the body temperature, the belly of the middle part of the body. This thermometer here is gonna be reading the same thing, the vapor is coming out of this column. You can see how cold that ice is making these condensers. Look at that, very cold. You can literally see <laughs> the condensation on the outside of the condenser. So hopefully we're gonna get some oils. So we've been running the machine for about an hour now. You see the condenser still is so cold. We got 151. Now this is, this is wrong, okay? The thermometer fell off the underside, okay? Because there's no way that the body temperature is 151C and then the vapor temperature is 176C. Ain't no bloody way. So anyways, guys, look at my balls. You guys know on YouTube what we do. All right, one with the balls. So don't worry about the balls, or they might end up in places you don't want them, AKA your esophagus, right? So anyways, look at this. Look, look at the natural gas flame, right? 
Tell me that thing isn't absolutely gorgeous, right? So this natural gas is what we actually want to use to run the generator. But the issue is, look at it. It's a beautiful flame. It's a big flame. It has some pressure to it for sure, an absolute certainty. However, the issue is this may not be enough pressure to run a generator at, at the amount of power we need to power all of these magnetrons, right? So we have to up the pressure because you got to think about it, right? This is a natural gas coming out, but there's look at the body of the machine. There's so much volume so much voluminous volume you know that obviously there's going to be a ton more of natural gas inside the machine itself so we got to take this and we got to actually run it through a pump that's going to increase the pressure and suck more out all at once and that's what we got right here like i said before my ac pump so we have the yoga ball hooked up to the regular output we're going to turn this valve off and then we're going to actually plumb this high uh the high pressure port coming out here to here. I have a valve on this, the vacuum pump, and the valve is there to let us regulate how much vacuum is being pulled. I got my diddy meter over here, or my mana meter, my manometer, sorry. All right, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to know how much va uh, of a vacuum is being pulled. So let's go ahead and do it. We just turned off this port, and no, we didn't turn it off yet, actually. So as soon as we turn this port off, we want to pull this vacuum so we don't build up pressure in the sea and explode it. So let's go ahead and do this. I got my vacuum wireless because you know me. Let's do it. All right. So turn this off. Boom. All right. Pull the vacuum. Boom. Vacuum pump is on. Now let's see the natural gas coming out on this end. That's going into my rectangular ball here. My quadrilateral test. Yeah. So, so obviously you can see there. A much more consistent pressure coming out and you see I can turn open this valve so that probably is what you need for the generator right there so guys it looks like pulling the vacuum as soon as I turn the vacuum pump on look at how many oils are coming out look at all that that is a crazy we've never seen this much come out that is a crazy amount of oils unprecedented amount of oils coming out right now so you would have thought the vacuum might actually i thought the vacuum would decrease the amount of oils because it's pulling it out so quick it can't condense but we got this condenser so cold all right let's see these oils they came out at a great rate but will we have great results let's see oh my goodness we got oils and a good bit of them the vacuum well, every time we turn the vacuum on, the vapor production comes out crazy. This is how much of a vacuum we're at. We're at um, a 7.5 7 HGs. But of course, you can't. All, we also have to remember we did add that ice water. This thing is still bone chilling cold, so that's a huge factor to why this um, the oils are also being formed so well. It's actually starting to get warm up here, which means it's kind of concerning because why is the condenser itself warm? It shouldn't be getting warm. But we still got, you know, this is this whole thing is still cold, so that's good. Let's see if we still have ice in here. Nope, all the ice is gone. So all the ice has melted. So this will be the time to add more ice. Eventually we'll get a water cooler, um, a dedicated water cooler. So overall, it has been an amazing run. You see that we got this full bladder filled up. This is the equivalent of about three of the yoga balls of the past. So this alone will compress to probably about 150 PSI in the propane tanks. I'll be turning off the machine soon here, but the oil yield is crazy. We still got oils coming out, as you see, to a crazy degree. So that's great. We ended up finishing out the run with an, a total oil yield, or liquid yield rather, of about just under 150 ml of liquid. Now I say liquid because it is mixed with water. Sometimes It tends to be about half and half, half oil, half water. So either way, ice worked amazing. This is still cold. This thing up here is starting to get warm. The whole thing is starting to get warm, so that's concerning. So obviously we're gonna have to get some more condensers or maybe use some liquid nitrogen or something. Um, blades were spun incrementally. Very little amount of plastic put in, probably about three pounds of plastic, shredded plastic put in. So not much, but nonetheless, very good run. Very successful, once again, a uh, low power run as well. So I can't wait until they get this generator. Exciting news, everybody. The generator has been ordered. It's on the way. All right, so I compress my gas into these tanks. You saw that last episode. Now the question becomes, what does it look like, right? What does this flame look like? So, turn it on. Low pressure. 
Okay, so it's it's the flame is there now, but I call it a ghost flame because you can't see it, but it's there, all right. And you will burn yourself when you touch that. Turn it up a little bit. So you can hardly see it, but that's how clean it burns. You see no smoke coming off. The Yep, there you have it. You got a flame. Thank you all so much for your donations. Everybody who has bought merch, super chats, anything you've done to financially support the project. I appreciate you so much because you make this possible for us to get these generators and to progress this microwave pyrolysis reactor project. Thank you all for tuning in. Nature Jab out. I'll see you guys in the next one.